Hello, good morning from New York for the last time in this week at least. My name is Bea Kupin, um, and we'll and I'm joined by my colleague Sofia Toma Cruz in Manila. We'll be walking you through the past six days of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s uh, working visit to the U.S. It's been a long and short week, long in that, isang linggo din yun, at short in that. Medyo marami-rami nangyari at kung andito ka covering him, medyo mahirap din huminga at mag-catch up sa dami na nangyari, especially on the last day which we'll be talking about in a bit. So siguro before uh, Sophia and I discuss the past week, a short recap lang of what uh, exactly happened during the six-day working visit. So again, kung working visit, ibig sabihin, let's address this at the top of top of the show pa lang, um, yung lahat ng gastos ay karga ng Pilipinas. Uh, kasi as opposed to a state visit or an official visit na usually yung host, tama Sofia, di ba yung sinasabi ko, na usually yung host country yung sumasagot um, sa visiting head of state kasi iniimbitang. So ito, uh, this is under the tab of the Philippine government. Um, yung pinaka-theme ng visit ni President Marcos dito, as is his visit, as was in his visit to Singapore and Indonesia earlier, uh, is the Philippine economy talaga. So, uh, quick recap lang tayo ng what he did while he was here. First day on the 18th, uh, yun yung arrival. He had a audience with the Filipino community. Again, yung mga dumay- dumayo doon. Uh, hindi lang galing New York City. Actually, sa New Jersey kasi naganap yun. So, New Jersey, New York, um, sa tri-state area. Pero meron ding lumipad all the way from the West Coast. At meron ding bumaba galing sa Canada para dumalo doon sa Filipino community gathering na yun. And then the day after, uh, he spoke before the New York Stock Exchange. He rang the bell um, in a media interview yesterday, a few hours ago in the Philippines. Kung i-convert mo ay um, sabi ni President Marcos na parang that was personally daw exciting for him to be at the New York Stock Exchange. And then between that, uh, nagkaroon siya ng mga meetings na hindi na public or at least hindi na pumunta doon yung media kasi closed door na siya, uh, including bilateral meetings and also meetings with business uh, businesses based in the U.S. And then um, we'll talk a little more about the bilateral meetings with Sophia later. And then he also had a appearance before the Asia Society. I sorry, before that pala, uh, the Philippines so the Philippine Economic Forum at the Carlisle Hotel. Uh, siguro publicized na at this point, but that's where uh, the Philippine contingent was based during the working visit in New York. Um, in the Carlisle, parang it was a morning of forums and panel discussions featuring mostly the economic team of President Marcos. So, yung headed, of course, by the finance chief, Ben Jokno. And then on the same day, dun nagka bilateral with U.S. President um, Joe Biden. And then after that, uh, he uh, was the keynote speaker in in a... They call it a meeting at the Asia Society, um, like a protest, and we'll talk about that a little more later. Finally, um, he did have a short coffee with the media, in long term, but really it was a press conference, short press conference, with the, with Filipino media or Manila-based media who flew into New York to cover the working visit. So yun, in, in yung gist, kung ano nangyari in the past six days, wala naman akong na-miss, correct? Okay, let's bring Sophia in. Um... So Sofia, uh, we talked. Do you want to start with the business meetings or the bilateral meetings? Uh, let's start with the bilaterals, na siguro. Okay, go. Yeah. Um. Well, so President Marcos uh, held two bilateral meetings at the sidelines of the UNGA, um, specifically with Japanese Prime Minister Kishida Fumio, and also, of course, we know U.S. President uh, Joe Biden. So, uh, just a quick recap of what happened in that meeting with Jap- with the Japanese Prime Minister. Um, usually, because these meetings happen on the sidelines of the UNGA, and it's just the, it's the first time Marcos is meeting another head of state, we don't expect them to go um, to really delve deep into all the nitty-gritty yeah. um, involved in, in Philippine-Japan ties or Philippine-US ties, but um, they do talk about, in general, just the, the breadth of ties, really. So with Japan... Um, uh, they talked about, of course, the 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 pillars of our relationship with them, which is our security and defense um, partnership, um, particularly in maritime security and maritime domain awareness. The Japanese 
um, Coast Guard really has close links with the Philippine Coast Guard. And of course, um, Japan's involvement um, and investment in the peace process in Mindanao. For for several administrations, they've really um, they've continued to show interest in the peace process, and they've um, always they've also invested a lot in in Mindanao in particular. Um, of course, we also know that they're very heavily involved in a lot of in, in a lot of big ticket infrastructure projects. Um, and we do get a lot of um, official development assistance from Japan. Um, so President Marcos called Japan and Philippines, I mean, our Philippines relationship with Japan as um, one of the closest partnerships in the region. So um, that's we kind of have a glimpse of how President Marcos sees Philippine and Japan ties. Um, of course, we he also talked about um, his administration's priorities and interests in particular in getting uh, Japanese investment in in assistance, uh, particularly in areas like agriculture, uh, cybersecurity, energy security, climate change, um, which are which is a constant theme, no Tamabea, that he raises, yes. no matter who leader he's meeting or even in in his business in his meetings with the business community. Um, and then, of course, during these meetings, you also see um, both leaders exchanging their views on uh, current issues of the world today. So you, that, that includes Taiwan, Ukraine, South China Sea. Um, and that's what happened with the Japanese prime minister. No? So on to the meeting with US President Joe Biden, which happened um, towards the latter end of his trip. Up until we knew that uh, President Marcos wanted to meet with US President Joe Biden. I mean he said it himself in the very yeah. beginning no big time as a first yeah. day pa lang. Yeah. He was saying like, I, I hope I get to meet with, with President yeah. um Biden. And even before he left the the Philippines for the US. Yeah. Um uh it was something that was already in the works. That's what um that's what the Department of Foreign Affairs in Malacanang did disclose. So the fact that it happened is a uh, significant um it's a it's a really significant event. Um, it so yeah, let's 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 delve into not just what happened now, but I think really what it shows us as well yeah. is that um, I, it's really a restoration of ties. Yeah. Um, it solidifies the rekindling of ties, which is interesting to note because President Biden also he did make mention of the fact that yeah, the U.S. and the Philippines has had rocky times. <laughs> Um, and we we can look at that and in in and think of two things at the very least, no. Um, the obvious being, of course, uh, the history that Marcus has uh, with the the U.S. It's a very personal, very very personal. Yeah, this is called a very it's a complicated. It's a it's very it's very complicated. Oh, parang kumbaga Sofia, ma- mahal minahal sila. I mean, sila, I'm talking about the clan. Especially mm-hmm. the the elder, the first Marcos president, the dictator, minahal siya ng US hanggang hindi na siya minahal, de ba? Basically, yeah. buong yeah. buong buong twenty halos years na pangulo si Ferdinand mm-hmm. Marcos Senior, sinuportahan siya ng US hanggang hindi na siya sinuportahan. Um, mm-hmm. Pero kinukup naman sila uh, when they went to next. Anyway, you were saying. Yeah. No, and just to get a better picture, better idea of kung gaano ka importante yung support na yun um kasi nung withdraw yung support nila eh that's also one of the pivotal things that really um ended martial law as well in the Philippines of course um it, yeah one of the pivotal things not yeah. not the only thing um but so that's one of that's one thing we can that comes to mind uh, I mean uh, almost automatically when when the president says when you as president Joe Biden said rocky a ro- rocky times and a rocky past and of course we also have the fact that we're coming off of um six very turbulent years under Duterte specifically when it comes to Philippine US ties no um Duterte never bothered to hide his disdain for the US um from from the very beginning in 2016 up until he left office, he made good in his vow and his promise to never visit what he termed even once um, as a Laosi America. <laughs> um, um, and this was this, despite the fact that, um, you know, uh, the U.S. Um, still provided a lot of lot, a lot of assistance, especially during the pandemic, you know, despite um, the terrorist rhetoric. And um, that was the that was the rocky pass that 
U.S. President Joe Biden was referring to as well. Um, and of course, we also can't forget the fact that um, it was under Duterte where Philippine U.S. ties really hit an, uh, a new low because yeah. of the termination, later on suspension, later on restoration of the Visiting Forces Agreement. And something was always being threatened, whether it be the VFA or another uh, um, the implementation of another military deal. Um, and um, so when when President Biden says that we have had rocky times, but you know our relationship is very critical, um, it really shows the willing. It also not only shows a restoration of Philippine U.S. ties and or, or, or and a rekindling of um, the old alliance, but also that you know the willingness to have a reset is clear yeah um this biden visit of course has is something that's been um uh both countries have been building up towards it because in the very the, it started with u.s deputy state secretary sherman wendy sherman's visit to the manila shortly after um, president marcus won and that's also of course when we heard from um the number two in the state department from herself that president marcus has diplomatic immunity Mm -hmm. and that was followed by the fact that um, second gentleman Douglas M. Hoff came to the Philippines for the inauguration, um, which was also very, which was also significant. Yeah. Um, because, um, President uh, Marcos did invite President Biden to attend, but he couldn't, so he sent mm -hmm. um, he sent the second gentleman, yeah. who's still a high-ranking official, and then that was yeah. that was um, followed up by uh, U.S. State Secretary Anthony Blinken's visit, which was mm -hmm. the first for Blinken. Mm -hmm. Um and the first for a for a state secretary in the last three years. No? Yeah. Um and then of course now we have the meeting with Biden. And yeah. um I, I think it's also, I mean, when we're talking about the family history, I think and Bayo can also probably talk more about this as well. No. Um it's still actually very much a family affair. And you can yeah. see that in, in the US, um, especially who was in the room during the yeah. meeting with Biden. Um <laughs> Um, although on the one hand, um, and we will talk more about that, I, but I will also just, um, mention that, um, I think that if anything, if it, if any, it, if, if it shows anything as well, aside from the family ties, it also shows how strong the, the relationship between the Philippines and the U S remains, despite the six years yeah. of Duterte. Um, and a lot of that, I think, um, falls to uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs and, and in particular, the Philippine ambassador to the U.S., mm -hmm. um, Jose Manuel Romualdez, who yeah. um, is known to have very strong ties yeah. with um, the current administration. And yeah. he also just so happens to be a relative <laughs> of President Marcos. Yeah, you, he's he's the uncle. And he's also part of, I mean, siempre part of the delegation as the, as since he's based here. But yes, um, very key role din siya, I, obviously, um, both in the general, in general terms and specifically in this trip. Gusto ko lang i-point out because, full disclosure, I'm not used to covering foreign affairs. Sophia obviously is. And as well as our, our news editor, uh, Paterno, is Michael. But it's very interesting to me how they phrase things nicely. Kasi kunwari, sa Asia Society meeting, um, uh, former Australian Prime Minister Rod asked, uh, the president nga na parang jokingly eh, parang patawan niya din na, na parang um tinanong siya so tell me in a nutshell how is it going with Uncle Sam because it wasn't going so well with President Duterte ang para sa dami ng discussions uh, sa dami ng speeches uh, remarks or or Q&As ni President Marcos dito parating may ganong explicit or implicit na sundot na para oh it's been a rough past 6 years parang there's always that acknowledgement that mm -hmm. he comes here with that not necessarily baggage but with that recent history no na parang he's immediate predecessor hindi lang immediate predecessor ha ng 2022 campaign by default para siyang continuity candidate ni president mm -hmm. Rodrigo Duterte former president Rodrigo Duterte so may ganung acknowledgement din na he's here uh, he's coming here isn't ordinary in that sense. Now it's just another Philippine president um, flying into New York, uh, flying into the U.S. and uh, talking to businessmen here and politicians here and world leaders here. Mm -hmm. There's always that acknowledgement. Now yes, uh, we are kumbaga 
affirming and, and reminding each other na okay pa tayo. So, gusto ko lang i-quote yung sinabi ni President Marcos kahapon sa Asia Society. Um, in a sense, despite the fact that my predecessor, President Duterte, had a very different treatment of the relationship mm-hmm. Between the U.S. and the Philippines, the basic premise of the strong relationship that has been developed between the U.S. and the Philippines over more than 100 years beyond the time that we had a formal diplomatic relationship, um, colonialism, uh, is recognized as being as strong as it has ever been. Um, it, ito may quote din siya na, you know we have found a way to live with each other in peace and found a way to calm the waters whenever things go awry a little mm-hmm. bit. So interesting din yung mga think- ganong. Yeah. I think um be uh, worth pointing out then na uh, um the fact that I mean palagi na mention yung yung 6 years ni Duterte kasi yung isang malaking tanong talaga sa um bagong administration ni President Marcos ay kung magiging friends ba basically yung Philippines mm. and US or kung magiging close mean magiging sobrang close pa yung yung Philippines sa China kasi diba yeah. yun yung ginawa ni President Duterte ginawa yung ginawa niya ay yung yung inf- yung um well known pivot to China so yeah. i think a really big question that um not only people in the Philippines but really obviously yeah. now we see people around the world has have have had with President Marcos is will will President Marcos stick to that pivot to China will he enhance it or mm-hmm. will he try to recalibrate and kind of go back to the Philippines traditional allies long time partners yeah. which i mean which everybody knows is um the US um and i think another really telling quote aside from yung sinabi president marcos sa asia society was what he said yeah. sa new york stock exchange yung um short question and answer yeah yeah with the, with the business community and um you might say, okay, but he talked. He talked about it to a to an audience of businessmen. No, sinabi yeah. mismo ni President Marcos na, you know, I had um like lunch with uh, U.S. Asia, sorry, U.S. Philippine Society, mm-hmm. and we were talking about geopolitics. But I think that it still applies to yeah um an audience like the business community. I want, but people should know that. Personally, sabi niya pa rin, sabi niya, yeah. sabi niya talaga, Personally, I cannot imagine yeah. a future um for the philippines without the us yeah and so um if there was any question kung yeah sa si president marcos or um ano ba yung view niya sa philippine us relationship i think at the very least um yes granted we are still in the first year not even first year yet but uh still early days of president marcos's administration but um it's a 180 degree um, turnaround from where President Duterte was, and and yeah. that's considering that President Marcos, like they mentioned, was the continuity candidate of President yeah. Duterte. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it's an interesting. I don't want to say contradiction, but duality, siguro no mm-hmm. continuity candidate. Siya, but so far, obviously, it's a foreign policy. It's a very I don't want to say opposite. Hindi naman opposite no, pero very different path yung mm-hmm. tinatahak natin sa first 100 days pa na makita natin. Uh, before we jump into the South China Sea, kasi isa rin yun na major yeah. topic or major overarching issue siya or overarching na theme siya, in, even in his business engagements nga. Um, and especially mm-hmm. in the uh, political and diplomatic engagements dito. Banggit ko lang shortly. Shortly lang kasi wala pa tayong full details eh, from uh, the the press office of, of Malacanang. Um, he did meet with Henry Kissin- Kissinger. Tama ba yung pronunciation mm-hmm. natin? Henry, as, in, as in the Secretary of State of the U.S. during the first Marcos president. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting and quite surprising kasi hindi namin alam na nagkipag-meeting pala siya until the president... Uh, disclosed it during that media interview. I'll be writing something about it. He did wax poetic and wax nostalgic about mm-hmm. um, Kissinger's... Uh, ki- Pwede ni Kissinger yung uh, his relationship with the former First Lady Imelda Marcos, with the former president. So, ando, naman ta- ando na ulit tayo sa this visit isn't just political and diplomatic for him. It has a lot of personal ties as well. And that's beyond the fact na and dami niyang kasamang uh, relatives Among, sa official yeah. delegation. And I'm not just talking about the first lady. Kasi syempre, of course, you expect the first lady to uh, tag along sa mga itong klaseng visit. No? Pero 
uh, official delegation because they're also elected politicians and that's another issue altogether. But anyway, he also met with the former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair, uh, not as Shemper, not as uh, not as a representative of the UK government, but he has a, he has his own foundation. So nag nakipag usap din sila about that. So we will flesh that out later on. I'm so Sophia South China Sino. Napansin ko actually kahit sa Asia society, even when he was asked specifically about the US and the Philippines, siya mismo nagbring up ng South China Sea. I had to mm. review the transcript because I was like, he was asked about the South China Sea much la- about China much later. Pero parang pagtingin ko ng transcript, ah, okay, he did mention it without necessarily being asked. Like Trump yung question was actually about the US, but he he mentioned it himself. Um Towards the the no na clarify niya nung media interview that so ano ba talaga I mean he he said before I think pero na clarify lang ulit kanina given his quote na at the Asia Society na let me try to pull it up but he said na uh, we do not have a territorial dispute yeah. what we have is China uh, claiming uh, our um, wait now yeah know. I got it um see so yeah, uh let me help you Bea. Kasi nakabukas na rin yung tab sa akin. <laughs> um, this, what he said um, was, uh, here, uh, the quote was, the position that the Philippines takes is that we have no territorial conflict with China. Yeah. What we have is China claiming territory that belongs to the Philippines. Yeah. So, What, what course, was your impressions of that? Kasi when, when I tweet, kasi syempre nag-live tweet tayo, no? parang I saw some observers of the conflict mm-hmm. in the South China Sea express surprise um mm-hmm. over that mm-hmm. statement ikaw you've been you've been following the south china sea issue for years now what mm-hmm. what what do you make of that line um well definitely it's a okay two well, two things no no una first things first um i think complementary siya sa yung sinabi ni president marcos so unga no um it, people were seeing uh, one one question people were asking was uh uh in which um, was pointed out as well, is that President Marcus did not make any explicit mention mm. of um, a West Philippine Sea or the South China Sea or the Hague ruling um, at the UNGA. Of course, you don't expect him to call out China because it's the UN and it's not really necessary. Um, a lot of um, experts will say it's not really necessary for him to do that. Diplomacy is really, is really also always, a lot of it is about you know, saying what you need to say in a in a diplomatic way, yeah. Um, yeah. essentially, right? Yeah. Um, so I think it was complimentary what, what President Marcus said uh, at the Asia Society, his Asia Society appearance. Um, and it's clear, it's a clear position, clear in in two aspects. One, in um, comparing to what President Marcus himself has said in the past. No, So if there's any question about what he said, for example, just as recent as the UNGA, that's a, that's a, that's a definitely... That definitely clarifies things, and also clear again vis-a-vis um, President Duterte. No, mm-hmm. um, uh, it, that's really the reference point we have right now, President Marcos, and what his administration's mm-hmm. approach will be compared to President Duterte's, um, you know, strategy of compromises that never really yielded much for, um, that didn't really yield much for the Philippines and um, didn't really affect. Did it make life easier for Filipino fishermen out at sea? Mm. Um, but you know, given those two things, I think it's important to point out that um, one other trend we've seen so far is that while the president makes these statements, um, a lot of it will really come, I think, from the from the DFA itself and from um, mm. um, what as what the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, what the um, department itself will do and will put out. Um, kasi, di ba, nung una, kahit sa sauna ni President Marcos, walang mention ng, mm-hmm. um, direct mention ng West Philippine Sea. He says things like, uh, we won't give up an inch of our territory, which yeah. of course is a reference to that. Um, and that is was also built upon the fact that um, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs said that a twin anchor of the Philippines um, policy in the West Philippine Sea will be both the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea and the Hague ruling. So, um, I think... Stepping back, we take what President Marcos said in New York. Um, mm-hmm. In context, we have, of course, as context, um, everything that his um, cabinet secretary, uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Enrique Manalo, said in the past. And mm-hmm. going forward, 
Um, that's probably, I mean, that's where we will also need to look, no? Yeah. Um, because right now, it's still early days. And I think a really one important thing to look out for is whether or not the president and his cabinet secretaries will be consistent with what they say. Yeah. Because you can say one thing now, but it really yeah. won't mean much by the end of it. Um, your position yeah. would have totally flipped. So, yeah. um, we also, uh, of course, also aside from the DFA, we also look at um, agencies like the DND and and bodies like the National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea, and of course, you mm-hmm. postcard it. So, um, mm-hmm. it's a good it's a good thing that he said that. But now we see how everybody how the whole bureaucracy takes its cue and implements that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so pagpaglilino pala in case nag-wonder ka, so ano ba talaga ang stand ni President Marcos nung media interview, tinanong siya, ano sir, multilateral, bilateral, sabi niya lahat ng lahat din. Hindi, hindi yun yung quote. But he said, we'll explore all options. Uh, mm-hmm. He said as much also sa Asia Society. Um, and also in the Asia Society meeting, by the way, he also encouraged the ASEAN to... Mm-hmm. Um, Kumbaga step up and exert up. more effort mm-hmm. in in terms of, of that while also engaging in China. So nakikita mo rin yung manifestation ng no, sinasabi niya na bilateral ba, multilateral, um, all options he will take that when it comes to the South China Sea. Um, so I think yun lang more or less yung major points. No? So yun, a restoration of the of restoration and reaffirmation kumbaga of Philippine and US ties not that it was broken or or it, it put, put in danger in any tested. real Let's it was it tested was that's the mm-hmm. diplomatic term for it, it was tested <laughs> uh, in the past mm-hmm. 6 years under president Duterte uh, marami pa mga little mga, not little things marami pang things that he was uh, he spoke about and disclosed during New York but i think you can follow the DS uh, our, our live updates page for that. Uh, siguro let's let's conclude and, and talk about the main takeaways from this trip. Siyempre yung biggest takeaway na itatanong ng Pilipino, ano ang iuuwi ng Philippine mm-hmm. delegation um, after six days in New York? And I think it, it 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 doesn't need to be spelled out, but it'll spell it out anyway. It's an expensive trip. New York is a very expensive city. Um, especially during the UNGA week, Onga, I refuse to say Onga, UNGA, the General Assembly um, week, the prices here are insane. Um, I'm, I'm, I saw on social media, marami na nagpumuna, na parang uh, yung location that the delegation stayed in, but we don't have figures yet, unfortunately, parang tinatali pa daw ng DTI yung pledges or yung projected na makukuha ng Pilipinas, pero siguro things to note, uh, Secretary Pascual did point uh did highlight uh two things. May isang meeting with two meet two companies actually that have to do with nuclear energy. Um one is a parang smaller nuclear energy. His example during the Philippine the press conference after the um Philippine economic briefing was na parang it could power like an island in Palawan. Although he did not go into detail, but he did say na they also met with a bigger company that could that had a bigger capacity for nuclear power pero he 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 refused to disclose the company name and details yet kasi medyo maaga pa din discussions um they also met with meron ding waste to energy company that they met with on his second day in the US uh, he met with Boeing as well um PNG they also met daw marami pang ibang mga companies that they met with kasi bukod pala sa politicians na kasama ni President Marcos kasama din nila uh, the top businessmen of the Philippines, actually, yung parang private sector na consultant niya led by Sabin Aboites of the Aboites Group. Pero andito nakita natin for sure, um, Zube, uh, Jaza. Jaza was here, um, is here, was here, Lance Kokong Wei uh, was here, we saw him for sure, Ramon, uh, sorry, Ramon Ang was here, is here in New York uh, along with, uh, parang joining the uh, meetings of the president as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, quick, quick, ano lang, for, for those of you who, Bea and I mentioned Jaza, that's Jaime Augusto Zabel de Ayala. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yun, uh, may mga kasama din siya na private sector um, officials, uh, officials, businessmen dito. They stayed the whole time, by the way, but some of them didn't, I don't think, as far as we know, they didn't join the, the presidential plane that is the Philippine Airlines na plane na ginagamit ng Pangulo to travel abroad. Um, some of them flew in ahead of time, some of them came in later on. So yun yung mga uh, 
highlights that we will we expect from the DTI to disclose in the coming days when they account na actually mm-hmm. uh, yung pledges. Kasi yun din yung inanote natin, yung mga groups that he met here, the businesses he met here, none, uh, some of them actually already have existing investments in the Philippines. So it's also a matter of um, uh, encouraging them to invest more. Nung media interview ni President Marcos uh, yesterday before he flew out of the U.S., um, yung isa din na uh, points of discussion daw nila, parang the ease of doing business in the Philippines, uh, issues that uh, U.S.-based um, businesses raised, na parang ito, these are points for discussion, or parang nahihirapan kami dito. So, parang as much as it was about pitching the Philippines to investors, there was also daw, according to the president, listening to them, and perhaps mm-hmm. tweaking um our regulations, if needed, um, to to encourage investment. Tino nung koren si Neda Chief Balisakan, no? Parang kasi parang for a lot of regular Filipinos, you can say na oh, uh, American businessmen or American businesses have a very are optimistic. That's the word that you know um, people like to use when they talk about these economic business mm-hmm. deals. Na parang, they're very optimistic about the Philippine economy. Sabi ko, what does that mean exactly? Um, aanhin natin ng optimism na yan ng mga American businessmen or American businesses. Uh, sabi ni Balisakan, hopefully it translates to jobs in the Philippines. So that's one thing that we have to, that we look forward to uh, knowing and mm-hmm. we look forward to the DTI disclosing kung ilang an, ilang jobs ba ang project to be generated ilang million uh, well billion malamang abot siguro ng billion yan ilang billion yung pinoforsee nila na papasok sa Pilipinas as a result of the discussions here mm-hmm. in New York the past six days I think um one one quick thing to note lang din Bea is um ito yung ito yung siguro maging isa sa mga unang test run kung gano um ka attractive yung mga yeah. ginawang um uh, legislative amendments already so far mm. as um i think one, one very big one of course or one of the most significant ones will be of course the uh, um economic liber- liberalization um yeah. uh, ngayon kasi the uh, may um 100% foreign ownership allowed yeah. for certain utilities like yeah. um uh, certain utilities so yeah. um <laughs> And it's a long Sorry, list. Walang, walang business reporter dito na memorize yung list. <laughs> and it's a long list, so yeah, yeah we would. Yeah, so no, that's a good point. It's also, it's also a test of how attractive that that yeah. um, amendment was and what kind of businesses it will bring in from um, a country like the U.S. Yeah, um, siguro. Ah, so we'll, we'll be giving you updates kung namitali na yung DTI. And another, another thing to note, again, nabanggit namin ni Sofia to earlier, di ba, parang this isn't, this is obviously a political and, and economic uh, agenda yung topmost of the delegation coming here, but you can't help but um, notice yung, yung family ties kaya, and not just talking about the past ties as we discussed earlier, diba? the, the Marcos clan's history, complicated history with the United States, um, but also the fact na kasama sa US trip, um, bukod again kay First Lady uh, Liza Araneta Marcos, kasama si Representative Sandro Marcos, uh, he even joined in the bilateral meeting with President Joe Biden. Nasa dulo siya, pero andun siya. He sat, I mean, and the, and uh, that's significant, right? The fact na hindi lang siya sa sideline, andun siya mismo sa mga upuan na nakikita mo sa photo call or sa, when, you, when you take a wide shot of the meeting. Also here was Speaker Romualdez, um, the cousin of the president, um, who and also nephew din ni Ambassador Babe Romualdez, well, uncle siya ng dalawa. Um, Siyempre, kasama din dito, hindi na to pamilya, pero friends, si uh, Sap uh, Lagdameo, his father, is is our ambassador naman, per, uh, permanent ambassador to the United Nations. So, may ganong ding angulo na, and, and again, si si President Marcos na mismo nagbe-bring up nito eh, siya na rin, nag, siya na rin mm. nagbabanggit, di ba, na parang kunay yun, yung when, when he met with uh, Kissinger na parang he mentioned the, the former U.S. Secretary of State himself um, related, they talked about his memories with the, the former president, the first president Marcos and the first lady. Um, Siyempre loaded din yun kasi may mga kaso silang hinarap sa US. Uh, the first lady and president Marcos, uh, the current president Marcos, diba? So may ganong uh, complications or interesting context uh, when you talk talking about the Marcos clan in the United States. Um, 
Ano pa ba? Yun and the fact, na, be, uh, the fact na, um, again, in terms of timing, nag-coincide yung kanyang yeah. first trip back to the US with the 50th anniversary of yeah. the Declaration of Martial Law in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. So, um, it was a, it's an interesting time to be there. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and talking about that, yesterday at the Asia Society, um, it wasn't really surprising, but there was a flash demonstration. I think we have a video. Well, I know. I think. Ako pala nag-video nun. We have a video of that um, from the Asia Society event. This this protest happened. We're playing a clips from that protest. Yeah. This protest happened right before. Wala pa yung Pangulo dito sa mismong auditorium where he spoke. Um, actually, wala pa dito yung bulk ng Philippine contingent, yung mga nasa loob pa lang niyan at that point, mga aides ng Philippine, ng Malacanang at Philippine government. Um, these are uh, yung, yung the, the people you see on screen protesting um, uh, President Marcos's appearance before the Asia Society. No? Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they're youth from Bayan, USA and Anak Bayan, USA. Um, flash protest. But in fairness, this isn't the only protest that they held uh, during the working visit. They protested in New Jersey. Not not them specifically, but the big coalition of uh, Filipinos, Filipino-Americans, and as well as at their allies who aren't necessarily Filipino, but, you know, um, empathize with their cause. Uh, and a protest in Citizen New Jersey. They also protested on uh, the 20th, um, 21st in the Philippines when President Marcos addressed the UNGA na uh, nasa labas sila ng consulate at uh, they tried to go near the UN pero syempre, um, strict yung security. Bawar talaga. Gusto ko rin pala inote yun na parang it's interesting here because while security is obviously heightened as in the first day namin dito hindi pa ganun ka-intense pero nung 20th specific, actually 19th when the world leader started flying in Kita mo talaga like every block had NYPD um, cars, multiple, two at a time sometimes. Naka-station talaga bawat block. Um, kasi nga, syempre you have, you have hundreds of world leaders or their representatives flying into New York at the same time. So traffic here got worse than usual. Pero yung, yung naka, natatawa kami, or hindi man natatawa, yung observation namin ng Malacanang, kung naalala nyo, nung nag-host yung Pilipinas, yung Manila, ng mga summit, ASEAN man yan or APEC, talagang stop yung buong mundo, di ba? Walang pasok, walang, walang trabaho. Kasi sa, because of the traffic, uh, sorry, because of the road closures, di ba? At one point, I believe it was APEC during the late President Aquino's term, um, literally EDSA, she not down, parts of EDSA were shut down, specifically so heads of state and their delegations could pass through safely and uh, without dealing Quickly. with Manila traffic. And then may mga zipper lanes. Ganun. Dito hindi. As in life goes on, um, you'll you'll see the occasional angry New Yorker because traffic has to be stopped temporarily because the head of state is passing by. Um, the most that we saw was road closures specific to President Joe Biden, of course. May mga parts ng New York na shinot down talaga uh, kung dumadaan dun yung pangulo nila. Pero for all the other heads of state, yun lang, makita mo may mga police escorts who um, so yun lang yung interesting sa amin na for me na para oh kung sa atin to the world stops dito it, it goes it 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 drags on um, major inconvenience lang for the locals here because the UNGA is in hindi pa hindi pa tapos by the way ha yung ano tama di ba mm-hmm. no, yes that will run until no that will run until um Monday 26? 26. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hindi pa tapos yung general debate so ganun ka dami yung world leaders who are flying in and out of the city until for one entire week. Um, yun lang naman at no. So in a, so parang kung, yeah. kung yung bigger gist that obviously the UNGA uh, participation and address but uh, the bigger picture of this US visit is is really uh, reaffirming and reestablishing our existing ties to the US as a country. So that's Marcos speaking as head of state and head of mm-hmm. government but also Marcos speaking as Ferdinand Marcos, the president mm-hmm. of the Philippines, as he introduced himself during the UNGA speech, di ba? Um, mm-hmm. Kumbaga, also reaffirming those ties, and because they're, they're not new. He obviously already has ties uh, to the U.S. as the son of the first president, Marcos. So, yun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, be a... Uh, for those of you who are interested, Bay and I will also still have more stories to come. So 
<laughs> so watch out for that and you can read more on that as well. Thank you for the reminder. Hindi pa tapos ang trabaho. Um, ang haba na ng recap na to. Naka 40 minutes na pala tayo. But thank you for watching. Uh, and we'll be, as Sophia said, we'll be giving you more analysis and updates even. Again, ulit, paulit-ulit, pero important din yung magkano ba yung estimate ng Philippine government na makakuha natin from this yeah, situation. Yeah, question that we're, yeah. we'll look out for. Mm -hmm. And that's it for us for now. I'll see you in Manila, Sofia. Thank you guys for watching. Again, this has been Bea Kupin. And Sofia Tomacruz. See you again next time. Bye.